Got the cover off now, and you can see torque converter fitted. Um, this engine was originally mounted a bit further forward and a bit more central to the frame. Uh, when I first got the torque converter, I fitted it to the centre holes. Um, you can see it's not in the centre now. It's, there's the choice of the three holes there. Um, but so it was slightly further down, and I realised quickly that it was fouling this unit here, which. Uh, I've since found out it's called a jack shaft and um, it basically changes the ratio. It has two sprockets on it. In this case, a 26 tooth and a 10 tooth sprocket. Um, but I got rid of that. So I fitted the torque converter. So this 10 tooth sprocket within the torque converter, I had the chain directly driven to the 36 tooth um, axle sprocket. Um, I went out for my first ride with a friend who actually has the same cart, exactly the same, minus some of the mods I've done, um, but he has the original centrifugal clutch. Um, it gave a, this cart had a, about a go-kart's length, um, off the mark, well that was it. Um, it really didn't pull anything on him until the very, very top end, but with the track we've got, um, it you barely you could tell you couldn't tell the difference in top speed it really was nothing to talk about but i did think the whole time that it's the engine didn't sound right it sounded like it was slipping well it turned out it was because eventually it threw the belt um i then went online and found a calculator to, to figure out um my theory that the gearing was all off and it transpired that i was running a theoretical top speed of about 45 mile an hour which for a six horsepower motor and a, a 30 series torque converter, given the weight of the vehicle and the weight of myself, it was just far too much. So what was happening was this um, drive pulley here was, uh, the belt was just slipping around it, generating a lot of heat. This thing got red hot, which had cooked the belt and yeah, end of. So I quickly realized that I had a choice. I could either change out that, if we can see, it's very dark in here, but change out this rear sprocket uh, from the 36 tooth to a um something bigger um in excess of i think 54 was required to bring the ratio down to something uh something that would work um it would have meant cutting into this bar beam here which i thought that's fine i can cut there um and attach a new piece uh, either welding or bolting straight through um and support it um, then I quickly realised that actually this piece here, which actually holds the, the brake, uh, would also need to be cut off, therefore leaving me without a brake. I mean, I'd have to buy more parts to possibly fit a disc brake on this side or with the remaining space I have left. Uh, I wasn't happy with doing that, so I quickly looked into refitting the jack shaft. Um, actually, oh, as you can see, that's what I went with. It did mean I had to move the engine pretty much as far forward as it will go. Uh, you see the mounting points there. There's a, there's about, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 mil left. But it was quite far forward. I also had to mount the jack shaft at the furthest uh, back point. Um, I have to elongate the holes as, um, for movement to be able to tighten the belts, um, which is why it's not at the furthest point anymore but it is um a lot further back than it originally was that meant that i could with a new chain that i purchased um which is a 420 420d chain um slightly thinner in width than the one that was on it i'm not sure if that's going to cause a problem it seems fine by the way i have tested it um but yes yeah, so um driving that straight through as you can see um and then converted down to the original 30 foot for 36 tooth um axle sprocket um and it works and to be honest with you uh i'll show you a video next but it really does launch now it takes off there's there's very little heat generated um new belt as you can see um actually a standard comet um 30 series belt a part number on there just in case you on that two zero three five eight nine five nine five nine so um i've got three of those off uh, amazon for about 
22 pounds so hopefully uh i don't have to replace that too too soon but i've got another two just in case um oh i have also um there's a talking bit setting this um setting here is for sort of road and street so it's about the tension of the spring on this the higher the tension the lighter it kicks in therefore you get a higher gear or a more acceleration for longer if you know what i mean more torque longer before it goes and changes for your higher speeds and uh, this center one is the standard it comes in so this and this is for sort of hilly terrain so basically flat lightweight cars uh, in between and then real off-roading where you need that acceleration and that torque maintained for a bit longer um so yeah it is possible it can fit um and it does work. I was quite impressed with the acceleration up my driveway, which is a, a slope. But I'm yet to see the top end. Theoretically, I don't think it's good for much more than about 20 mile an hour at the moment. I don't know um, for sure what the torque, if the torque converter gives me any more top speed than the standard calculations. But yeah, 20, 2022. 20, uh, 15 inch wheel, by the way. Um, so i think you've uh, had all the ratios there to calculate that and um, what i'm tempted to do if the top speed is not enough um obviously um i can change any one of the gears but i've sort of opted for this uh here if i can change that to a 12 tooth um obviously it will mean extending the chain but or adjusting it if i can if i doubt it because then if i move that i'm gonna have to move that and yeah 12 tooth. Um, that will give me a bit of a couple of mile an hour of extra top end. In addition to that, my next job is to remove the engine now and remove the governor. Um, yeah, so, okay, I hope that was helpful. That's me out.